Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 27th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Stars Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Well, not a good day if you are still using Move It by Progress Software. This software, of course, had critical vulnerabilities in the past, leading to numerous ransomware incidents in the last few months. Well, we do have a new critical vulnerability allowing unauthenticated access to your Move It server. For those not familiar with Move It, or maybe it's pronounced Move IT, it's an enterprise file sharing system that essentially allows you to use a Windows system in order to offer files via HTTPS and SFTP. And SFTP is the problem here. With SFTP, you do have the option to authenticate using a public private key scheme, like you usually are supposed to if you're using SSH and SFTP. The problem with MoveIt's implementation of SFTP is that instead of providing the actual key as you authenticate, you're able to provide a path where the system may find the key that it is supposed to use to authenticate you. The problem then is that this is not even limited to a local path. You can, for example, make the MoveIt server connect to an SMB share which then will lead to the usual problem of leaking credentials, possibly via a weak hashing algorithm. But if you're able to actually then upload a file to the system, you're able to specify that file name and use it for authentication instead of the actual file. And that allows you to just authenticate and log in as any user to the MoveIt server. WatchGuard security, which hasn't actually found the vulnerability, but wrote up a great blog post with lots of details how this vulnerability really works and how it could be exploited. Exploitation had started before there was a patch available. And uh, yes, a patch is available now, but exploitation is in full swing within hours of the patch being released. So sadly, this is again one of those cases where you must assume compromise if your MoveIt instant is vulnerable to this particular problem. And given the history of this vulnerability, I assume that the ransomware gangs are going to basically knock at the doors of prior clients and try to reinfect them using this new vulnerability. And then we have a rather large scale supply chain attack issue with the popular JavaScript website polyfill.io. Polyfill.io is actually a con deliver network, cdn.polyfill.io, that many websites use in order to load JavaScript code that does provide a functionality that is present in newer JavaScript APIs, but not always supported by older or all current browsers. These polyfills are essentially libraries that emulate these newer JavaScript APIs. So this is a quite popular system in order to support a wide range of browsers. Polyfill.io back in February did change owners. The domain changed owners and the person behind Polyfill did actually warn users to switch to a different hosting uh, CDN. And there is, for example, Cloudflare and others available that provide the same service for the same libraries. Well, it uh, looks like these warnings were very much warranted. There are now reports that some of these Polyfy libraries have been altered. And what happens here is that they're being altered dynamically. So you're not always getting the same library when you're connecting to polyfill.io. IO. Instead, for example, if you're using a mobile device, you may receive a different library with malicious code being added. Now, another solution for uh, this problem is typically also sub-resource integrity. Uh, what this refers to is an integrity parameter that you can add to a script tag that will provide a hash that is then checked by the browser to make sure 
that the correct file was downloaded. The problem with polyfill.io is uh, because it does attempt to basically adjust itself for different uh, browsers. Different user agents may actually get different uh, versions of the file. So it's perfectly normal for a mobile browser to get a different uh, version of a polyfill uh, file than a desktop browser. Just in this case, the mobile version tends to have malicious code added. Apple today released an update for their AirPods. Uh, this particular update uh, fixes a firmware vulnerability that would allow an attacker to intercept uh, Bluetooth connections. Apparently, if your headphones are trying to connect to a previously paired device, an attacker would be able to spoof the intended source device and then gain access to the headphones. This, of course, could then in turn lead to things like eavesdropping. Note that in order for the firmware update to be applied, your AirPods must be paired to an iOS or macOS device. So if you're using your AirPods with an Android phone, for example, the update may not be applied. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.